Right, tell the audio champs, and yes, it is time to go full beast mode. We're going to be comparing the base model M1 Pro with 8 CPU cores and 14 GPU cores to the most powerful PC laptops on the earth. And yes, I'll even chuck in some benchmarks of an RTX 3090 with a 5950X. And I know what you're thinking, why are you comparing the MacBook Pro 14 base model to all these beast PCs? That's really not fair. And you'll be right. Because when I do get my MacBook Pro 16 in, so we're talking the M1 Max with 32 GPU cores, I'll be doing even more tests. So make sure you get down there in the description. Whatever you want tested, you still got the chance for me to test it. We're comparing this base model to the fastest PCs out there. That's how we do it here at Talio Tech. Let's see how it compares to the most powerful things out there so you can make an informed choice. And of course I do actually compare it to the last Macs as well. So make sure you sub up. And if you haven't seen my previous videos, if you do have a Mac, you're in for a big treat because I made them in HDR, 1000 nits peak brightness. They're gonna blow your retina out if you watch them in HDR. So check out my last two videos. So anyway, there's two Beast laptops here. These aren't the only ones I'm comparing it to, but this is the fastest content creation laptop, the X1 Extreme Gen 4 that has an i9-11950H and a 16 gigabyte RTX 3080, 100 watts. And then we have the Beast Gaming laptop here, which is the Legion 7i. I also have data from the Legion 7, which is the AMD version, 5900HX. But this one here is 11800H and a 16 gigabyte, 165 watt RTX 3080. So it doesn't get any more powerful than that. And yeah, the desktop, yeah, 3090. And an iMac, desktop iMac. Anyway, let's do it. Right, so let's start with Lightroom. 74 RAW files converted to JPEG. And every test I do here is real world. None of this, you know, circle jerk of benchmarks, like, you know, Geekbench, which is just a series of small little tests. It's not really pushing the CPU and it's not real world, right? And every test I do is running native. So it is an Apple Silicon app. So it's made for the M1. And what we can see here is look how fast that eight core is. This is the base model. Can you imagine how fast the 10 core is, right? And this is basically a CPU test. I think the 10 core version will probably be the fastest. But what's interesting to me is the X1 with the i9, that's very fast. That one's the fastest here. And I guess the i9 makes a difference because it is faster than the Legion 7i, which has 11800H, which isn't an i9, that's an i7, because the X1 Extreme is a little bit thermally constrained. So I'm surprised it really gets that fast score. But that M1, look at it. I mean, that is really good. And by the way, that X1, when I edit with that, it screams its guts out with fans. You have to be connected to the wall. You're not going to get the power if you're unplugged. And that's the same with all the laptops, actually. The legions are pretty quiet. But I can't wait to get the M1 Max in to see if it actually is the fastest here. Now let's have a look at Blender CPU test. This is the BMW test. Now this was an Apple Silicon version of the app too. And by the way, Apple are partnering up with Blender. So expect some big optimizations to come this way for the M1s. You'll see there that we have the M1 Max core because I actually know the score of pulled it from data that is creditable because I actually saw it run on YouTube. I will test that myself, however, but you could see on screen it was three minutes and 12 seconds. It is basically the fastest. Is it as fast as the desktop up the top? No, but come on, that desktop uses, I don't know, it uses 200 and something watts, 250 watts or something like that. And you're comparing it to this M1, it's barely probably using 40 watts, not even that, 30 watts. But it is faster than everything else, other than the Legion 7i, which is really fast as well. So if you've got good calling in a Windows laptop, that's very fast. And what you see there, the orange bar, that is the G15. And that's a 5900 HS. So that's a 35 watt part. So it's a lower watt part. So the AMD part can actually be fast. It is actually faster than the Intel in Blender. But what you can also see is the M1 Pro 8 core. There's a big difference between this and the M1 Max, right? And it's not just the extra two cores. It's the extra memory bandwidth as well. So you've got to take that into account. Now let's have a look at my sample project. Now this is a real world project it's about five minutes 25 long it's h.264 color graded lud applied some high resolution photos current systems play it 
pretty easy, but it used to be really hard on the system. And what you can see there, the desktop is actually pretty fast. I mean, of course, but it's not that much faster than the Legion 7 with the 11900H, right? So the blue bar versus the red there. Now the M1 Pro 8 core at the bottom is three minutes. Now this is Premiere Pro. It's not probably the best optimized app for these Macs, but importantly here, it is faster than the MacBook Pro 16 i9 with the 5600M, okay? So it's faster than the MacBook Pro 16, the last one with the i9. And it's pretty much neck and neck with the XPS 15. And that one there had eight cores. And I'm dying to see what the M1 Max does with this. I suspect it's going to be a lot quicker. Now this one blew me away because this is the exact same project. All I've done is exported an XML from Premiere. I imported it into Final Cut. I had to just clean a few things up, but it's exactly the same project as the last benchmark in Premiere. You can see here in Final Cut, it renders the same project slower. Now that's because the YouTube preset, which I used on both of them in Premiere and Final Cut, the YouTube preset in Final Cut actually compresses the file more. So that's why it takes longer. You'll see that it has a smaller file size, right? But this blew me away because the base model, this is the base model, okay? It beat out my desktop i9 5700 XT 27 inch iMac. Yeah, it just beat it. And that thing uses like over 200 watt CPU GPU. It's a desktop, really. That is amazing. Can you imagine the M1 Max? Can't wait to put that in this test. And not only that, if you've seen the Puget System benchmark, the 14 inch MacBook Pro, the one with the 10 cores and the 16 core GPU actually beats a desktop with a 5900 HX and an RTX 3090. It wins because of the playback ability with the media encoder and the ProRes encoder. So these things are really optimized. Now let's look at Cinebench. And I know what you're thinking, this ain't real world, but it actually is. Because if you had this project in Cinema 4D, this is how long it would take to render. So what we can see here, this is multi-core. And obviously the 8-core M1 Pro is going to be slower. But we do know what the M1 Max is. That's the one in the middle. That's the red bar. That come from a Nantech, that benchmark. So we can trust that source. But what you can see is here, the Intel and AMD are still the fastest in multi-core. But they use so much more power than these M1 processors. And it's so amazing that they're getting even close to these laptops. And that 11800H, that does like 125 watts to get that score. It does ramp down a little bit, but basically the whole test is doing 125 watts. And this M1 is probably using 30, 35, something like that. What the M1 Max I'm talking about. So it's like three times the power nearly for a score that's not really that much higher. And I actually wonder, instead of doing the score, you might as well just time it, right? And there you can see the difference between the 8-core M1 Pro and the M1 Max. There's a fair difference there. And the XPS 15, come on, that's doing all right. Now let's look at Cinebench single core and pretty much the Pro and the Max will be the same because the single core speed is pretty much the same on all the CPUs along this new Mac line. And you can see it's not that much faster than the M1, so the one in the MacBook Air. So that definitely means they're based on the A14 chip. So that's basically last year's iPhone. So you can imagine, you know, at the end of next year with the M2 Pro and M2 Max, they're going to be based on the A15, the current iPhone silicon. So it's very interesting. I thought the single core would have been faster. Faster. I thought they would have put more power into it or something to make the Pro and Max faster than the M1, but it is what it is. It's slightly faster. And as you can see there, up the top is 11950H, and that is a beast. That thing does 4.8 gigahertz pretty much the whole run and actually was doing 5 gigahertz at some stages. Yes, uses a lot more power than the Mac, but that is a beast single core. And something to note is that Older Lake is supposed to be 20, maybe 30% faster. So, ooh, that's going to be interesting. Older Lake CPUs coming out very soon. Well, the start of next year. And there is a 16 core, 65 watt AMD part coming to laptops next year that's supposed to be 50% faster. It's good, right? We love this competition. But anyway, make sure you put in the description what test you want done. When I get the 16 inch beast in, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.